Ten years on, how does it feel to still be a Sheffield Steeler? It's amazing, it's something I never, uh, never expected. So I've loved every minute and, and uh, long may it continue for me. When you look around this place, how does it make you feel? It's weird, it's, um, it's like a home from home now. Um, it'd be weird walking into anywhere else, that's for sure. It's, there's so many memories in here and, and familiar faces now in the crowd. I recognise everybody, so it's, uh, it's definitely special. People don't often see the softer side of you, but, but you're someone who cares a lot, don't you, about what you've achieved and what this team's achieved in your time at the hockey club? Yeah, I mean, there's a few of us um, that really care about this club and, and have done for a long time. And I'm, I'm someone who's, who get everything I get is from hard work, so everything that we've achieved and won is, has come from that, so I'm, I'm definitely proud of it. Let's talk about you as a hockey player. How would you describe yourself? Um, honest, hard working, give you everything I've got and that's, that's how I've always been and like I just said, everything that I've, I've got on the ice I've had to earn. I'm not the biggest guy but I like to think I have a big heart and I'll do what it takes to, to get what I need. When did that change for you though? Because you were a guy that, that weren't like that as a 14 year old, a 16 year old, an 18 year old actually. You were at the other end of the scale. You found it dead easy. You were the top player on your team all the way through the junior system in Manchester. Yeah, it's, it's weird how you, how you fall into things, but it was, like you say, it was kind of easy as a kid and, and things came a lot easier. But as you adapt and then, you know, you don't maybe grow the, the way you thought you would and all of a sudden your hands aren't as good as you thought they were. But I still had a, a love for the game and, and found a way to, to kind of keep myself in teams and and that, and that was by being kind of a, a bit of a rat and someone who ran around and, and got in people's faces and it, it worked out well for me. Is there a day when you look back now where you thought, yeah, I just love hockey. That's what I want to do with my life as much as I can. Yeah, it was probably, um, I would say even after London, I still wasn't sure if this was going to be a, a career, but then when I had probably my first year in Sheffield, first half year, it was a tough year, but. The second year was really when I, I kind of felt like this was the place I wanted to be and, and started taking it a lot more serious at that point and, and really, really enjoying it. I mean, that's quite late into your career in many respects. You played best part of three years pro by then. Yeah, it was. I mean, there was so much that had happened already with teams folding and, and going here, going there, thinking I'm going to have to go into the EPL when, the, when the London went down. and. Um, so it was a lot had happened in a short amount of time, but then I kind of felt like I'd found, I'd found something special there and it turned out I had and I wanted to keep, keep it, so I, I started taking it a lot more serious. Talk to me about when you played in London, because you, you were fresh, you, you just started playing, Mark Thomas even fresher than you. A pair of you go down to London and all of a sudden you look around that locker room and there are guys who not five months earlier were playing in the NHL. What was that experience like? Yeah, it was. It was crazy. We had some uh, big characters too that were, were from there. They weren't just any any player. You know, Kenzie was a, a well-known tough guy and a, one of the toughest guys to probably ever play in this country. It was great. They were great with us and they, they loved us. They loved the British guys. They loved the culture and they really looked after us. You know, we weren't making a lot of money in London and they really took care of us. So it was exciting for us. I mean, yeah, we, we shouldn't have really been on the ice with NHLers at that point, I don't think. And what happens when, you, when you're practising with a, an Eric Cairns, for example, who, for those that don't know him, was, was as you mentioned, maybe the, one of the toughest players ever to play over here. What, what was he like with you? How did he interact with you, if you like? He was, he was a bigger kid than I was. He was uh, and that's saying something. Yeah, big time. He was, a, he was a big friendly giant, really, off the ice. On the ice in, in uh, London there, he could reach one side of the boards to the other from the middle, so it was scary going against him in practice. But he, he was great with us. and. You know, did he take it practice and, and off the ice? Did he take it that serious? Probably not, not like he would in the NHL. But when he went out there, it was definitely, uh, well, you saw he was, he was all or nothing. So he was good for us. It was, it was a great learning experience. Uh, and that team got you into probably more scrapes in that first year in London than you could ever possibly have imagined. <laughs> yeah, no, the, you, you felt invincible on that team, kind of. We had so many tough guys and guys that wanted to fight. You kind of had to buy into it, or I don't think you'd have lasted there, but it was good. People had to come to London on a Friday night and, and no one wanted to be there, so 
it was exciting. You could run around and, and you knew someone would have your back. So, but I think people were licking our lips once we moved, once we moved teams and we didn't have so much toughness. Um, we had to find our own way a little bit then. Your path to Sheffield took a, a small detour via Basingstoke. Yep. Remember Mark Thomas telling me that's the only time you've ever played against one another yeah. in a, a serious game. Was it strange playing against him? And I, I know you, you got your opportunity and you managed to catch him with one as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was strange, yeah. I remember National Anthem, none, none of us could look at each other. We were kind of laughing, like it was like a big joke, but um, it was weird. It was just, we'd never played on a different team and then after that we hadn't, but like you say, I got, I got my chance. There was a bit of a scrum and a kind of a line brawl and I just, I seen an opportunity and I took it. Because I, I, I kind of knew I was going to end up in Sheffield, I was hoping. Um, so I thought I'd better take that swipe while I had a chance. That was a Dennis Maxwell promise, wasn't it? When London folded and he, he got the opportunity to come to Sheffield, he told you that you'd, you'd get your chance to come here? Yeah, he took, he took Mark right away. Um, and he told me, give me a couple of weeks to get settled and, and I'll, I'll bring you. He, he kind of, I suppose he did promise you yeah, and, he, and he stayed true to that, which I'm eternally grateful for. You know, he, he stayed in touch every, every other week and then it ended up... I think they were on a, a long trip back from Edinburgh and he called me at like two in the morning and said, I'll be here on Tuesday, so I was pumped um, and never looked back. At that point, was this ever going to be home to you or was it just the next stop? At that point, I think it was, it was the next stop because we didn't, we didn't know what to expect. I was coming to a big club like Sheffield, I was just a, a new name to the league still, so I didn't know kind of how it would all turn out and then obviously what happened with Maxi and and then Wiss came in and then over that summer Matty came in so I was like, geez, what's going to happen? And I ended up coming back and I loved Matty, um, kind of clicked, he was one of the boys and, and he really looked after us and, and helped my career a lot. You've had lots of different coaches that have got different things out of you. Dave Matsos who maybe helped the defensive side of the game. You had your best year under Ben Simon offensively. You're asked different things by Paul Thompson, different, different things by Jaron Adams. Who do you feel has maybe moulded your game the most? I would say a combination of, of Matty and Ben Simon. I think <clears throat> Matty really gave me a, a lot of ice time when he was here and something I probably never expected. I didn't know what to expect with Matty, never coached and I'd never, and I'd never played for him. So he really gave me an opportunity to show what I could do and then he saw what I was good at and so I wasn't so good at and I played a lot of penalty kill and, and a lot of being on the ice at the end of games and and uh, you know seeing games out, so it's more of a defensive role. I think Ben Simon's biggest impact on me was he kind of taught me what it was to be a professional, and he was a centre also, a kind of defensive centre. So I learned a lot from him, and uh, I, but I think overall the the biggest thing I learned was how to be a professional under Ben. You've had some wonderful highs here in Sheffield. What about lows though? There's been some pretty bad times, haven't there? Yeah, there has. There's been bad times on and off the ice. Um, it was the one summer when nobody knew who was going to own the team or was there going to be a team where we were going to have a job. Um, and then there's times when we were getting we got knocked out of the playoffs two two years in a row. So there was there's always been our hard times, but we've had such a good core group of guys that we've kind of just sailed with it and, and rolled with the punches really. And, kind of knew that we had good people in the right places and, and things would come right in the end and luckily they have and now Tony's uh, taken over the team. It's, it's gone from, it's gone greater and greater every year. It, it has that stability now, doesn't it, as a hockey club that I suppose as a professional you know that you're definitely going to get to the end of the season with, with your paycheck intact. Yeah, there's definitely that and I mean look look around, look at the, the scoreboard and everything. It's, it's, it's a huge night in Sheffield now, it's, it really has. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot of pride to be had around her. The Bulldog, when we listen to you talk, you're not a Bulldog. Yeah. It, that came as a moniker from Dave Sims. What do you feel about it? At first I didn't, I didn't like it really. Um, I mean, who wants to be called a Bulldog? I mean, they're not the nicest looking thing in the world, are they? Um, <laughs> but you know what? Like a, it, I suppose it's kind of true, like I bought into it, that's my, that's my role, that's how I play. People chirp me for it on the other teams, it, it doesn't matter, it's, you know, it's a name that was given to me by people I have a lot of respect for, so, I mean, it is what it is, I love it. The kids love it, fans like it, so who cares, right? And it got you into a few scrapes, didn't you, particularly with, with Nottingham and Bruce Richardson? 
yeah, there was lots uh, going on that, that year particularly, like, um, articles being written and stuff. And you know what, I, I've never shied away from that kind of stuff at anywhere I've been, so I love it, I still love it. Um, even as I'm getting older, I'll, start, I'll still do it all over again. When you look back at your toughest opponent, who would you say it is? Just playing wise? Yeah, who, who do you hate playing against the most? There's been so many, I mean, sometimes you just, you get matched up with people on a night and you think this is gonna be a tough night. The one that stood out for me one year, it was when I was in London actually, was uh, Wade Bielak and I remember playing shift after shift against him and going in a corner with him and it was like, it was like going 10 rounds with Tyson, just going into the corner for 10 seconds. It was, he, he played the game serious and he took no prisoners, so I'd, I'd definitely give him that. What about accolade. the best player you've played with? Best player, I'd have to say Leggy. I think what he's done over such a long period of time and just kept producing no matter what kind of role he's been in. You know, penalty kill, power play, he ran, pretty much ran the power play here for probably seven years and him and Roddy just used to kill it together. So I have to, I have to give him that. He's, he really is an amazing player and a true Steelers legend for me. You look around that locker room now and there's a space next to you where Tomo used to sit and uh, he's been replaced by, by somebody else, but Jonathan Phillips, you, Jeff Leguie, if you could bring one character back in from all your time here and, and stick them into the mix in this locker room, who would it be? I think my, my obvious one would be Tomo, because that's just, that's just natural, so we were always together, but I think I'd bring Joey Talbot back, he brought something a little special to the to the mix, he had a, a funny, funny humour about him and amazing player. So I think he was a he was a leader, even though he kind of didn't look like the loudest or, or most outspoken guy. He was a leader with the way he played and and the things he said. He knew how to get it done. So I think I'd bring Joy back just for all round laughs and and what he did on the ice. If we look up there into the arena, they just. Hanging some of the banners, the 2014-2015 one is, is just hanging down now. Of all of those, which do you feel the proudest of? Um, I, think, I think that one's right there. Last year, coming here against Cardiff, who had given us trouble all year. Um, they beat us in the Challenge Cup final and it was kind of an all or nothing. And I think, well, you probably hear, but it's one of the most intense games I've been a part of. And, to win, to win a, a league on the last day of the, the season against the, the best team in the league, then that was definitely special. But they've all been amazing. The, the first one, obviously, will always stand out at the playoffs. Um, just, I don't know, any time you win, you just, the, the feeling you can't, you can't explain, you just want to keep doing it. It's, so when you don't, it's so disappointing. So, yeah, no, I think that league stands out for me right now. Last year was another difficult year for everybody surrounding this club with Amy Usher. You seem to have a really special relationship with her. Just talk me through that and, and, and what it was like for you through that period of time when you knew that, that she was really ill and, and her time was coming to an end. Yeah, we, um, when we first met, we had no idea that, I had no idea that she was ill. Um, and then we were told and obviously we were all saddened by it. And then. I don't know, we just kind of clicked and I remember when we won the we won the the playoffs that year when G came in and uh, she was on the ice and then she was at our after party and we were up till five in the morning together with her and her sister Beth and, and she shared some good moments there and she was a real special girl and I don't know, I think sometimes just meet those, meet those people where you just have a connection for whatever reason and I guess at the beginning, me and Spence were her favourite players and for whatever reason, I don't know why, but um, but yeah, we just had a special connection it, and it was it was hard sometimes because you knew a, a sad day was going to come, but we never we never ever discussed anything to do with it. We just kind of got on with it like, like we were, everything was fine and I never asked her and she never told me, so that's just kind of relationship we had. I look at you now and you're emotional, aren't you? Yeah, it was sad. It was sad. Um, and then for her to, for her to pass that week before we won the league was really, really emotional. So, no, she was a special girl. It was a very, very nice family. So, we still talk to her, her parents and Beth. So, yeah, she, she has a, a big place in my heart. What's 
have you still got to achieve in the sport of ice hockey? What have you still got to achieve in life? I mean, I've got my own family now too, so I guess I have to be successful for them to keep providing for them. And I, st I still see myself as being challenged to play in this league. Um, a lot of people don't don't think I should should be in a league, I guess. And you read things, you know, t Twitter's like a like a forum at times, and you see everything. So I almost feel like I've got something to prove every time I play, and prove to Tomo, prove that you know he brought me back for a reason. I still feel I can give a lot on this team, and and uh, I'll keep proving that every time I get a chance. And would that be your hope that you stick around here for another couple of years? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've got no plans to retire anytime soon, and you know, the testimonial is what it is. But I think a lot of people assume because you get a testimonial that you you're done. But I, like I say, I've got no intentions of of retiring or going anywhere, and hopefully that'll be in Sheffield.